Goosebumps has been around for 30 years. Introduced in 1992, R.L. Stein's series of frights has inspired countless young horror fans, including myself. I could never stop reading these, but most of all, I remember being mesmerized by all the colorful covers by artist Tim Jacobus. For this momentous anniversary, Brandon's Monster Morgue is dissecting the classic Goosebumps covers that made reading a scream. Let's begin with the one which started it all, Welcome to Dead House, THE creepy house of my childhood. The door is left open to invite you in, but the mysterious figure in the window says, Reader beware, you're in for a scare. Scholastic tried out two contenders for the role of permanent cover artist. Tim Jacobus won with his Dead House cover, but we can't forget Jim Thiessen, who planted the Stay Out of the Basement cover with a more realistic approach. The plant-like veiny hand grew some fear in my imagination. What kind of creature is on the other side of that door? It's one of only two covers in the original series to be produced by an artist other than Jacobus. Stanislaw Fernandez took over Be Careful What You Wish For when Jacobus was on vacation. Tim Jacobus was assigned covers for titles in various stages of development. Sometimes he turned in a work of art so powerful, the publisher actually requested R.L. Stein to add a scene to the story in order to match the cover art. As was the case with the skeletal Polaroid of Say Cheese and Die. The iconic dream sequence would never have been if not for Jacobus' white picket fence portrayal of death. It's enough to make you smile. Speaking of smiles, here's Buddy the Camp Counselor. Tim Jacobus has used himself as his own reference model for multiple covers, most notably for one of my favorite books, The Horror at Camp Jelly Jam. Buddy is right there, smiling. That smile is one of the creepiest I've ever seen, even to this day. Buddy the Counselor was turned into a Goosebumps figurine, so in a weird backhanded way, there's an actual toy of the Goosebumps artist. The summer camp stories are a staple of the Goosebumps mythos, and the trend starts with one of the earliest covers I remember taking from my older brother's bookshelf, Welcome to Camp Nightmare. The glowing green of the tent and the shadowy monster peering in is one of my earliest horror art memories. Summer camps are fun, and Goosebumps has a habit of turning fun locations into frightening thrill rides. Not even amusement parks are safe with One Day at Horrorland. You can see the park in the distance with a vast wasteland leading us to the welcome sign in the foreground. Is that monster peeking out from behind, or just part of the sign? These horrors play those kind of tricks on you. Want more monsters? We have some giant ones for you. A Shocker on Shock Street brings us back to the days of 1950s schlocky giant bug movies. If you look carefully, you'll see this giant praying mantis is actually a robot. I never noticed that as a kid. I always thought it was just a gray bug. Very subtle artwork. Unlike the blob that ate everyone, which isn't subtle at all. Just look at that giant tongue rolling off the page. Gross. Another cover Jacobus modeled himself for is The Girl Who Cried Monster, a cover that illustrates a scene from the book. A lot of covers are a monster showcased front and center, but here we see the fright of our main character in the background. We don't see librarian Mr. Mortman in his monster form, but we know something isn't quite right with him. But my favorite cover is Night of the Living Dummy 2. The vibrant colors of the lead girl's room is supposed to be a safe place, but is turned into something scary by the simple act of Slappy sitting on the bed. Even the stuffed animals look disturbed by Slappy's presence. This stark contrast between good and evil is a masterwork of children's horror. These are the covers that had the most impact on me. I've only scratched the surface of great Goosebumps covers, and I didn't even include Goosebumps Series 2000, Give Yourself Goosebumps, and other spin-offs. I highly recommend reading the book The Art of Goosebumps by Sarah Rodriguez for more information about Tim Jacobus' work. It's where I got most of today's facts. Goosebumps is still scaring kids to this day, and offering plenty of nostalgia to horror fans like me. Tell me which classic Goosebumps covers haunt your memories. I asked everyone on Slasher what their favorite classic Goosebumps covers are, pitting two covers against each other every day for two months, with one emerging as the vile victor. After two months of cover versus cover, The Haunted Mask is the fan favorite. It's easy to see why this iconic, monstrous Halloween face took the public by storm. If you want to get in on all the Slasher fun, you can follow me at Brandon's Monster Morgue.